So in Cooking Companions, which we are going to set up right now, the, we are deep in the woods of the Tatras Mountains. Supplies dwindle and food, floodwaters are rising. It's up to us to keep spirits high and make the most of our survival skills. Will we butter up the right person or will we wind up on the chopping block? Ooh. Spooky. Spooky, spooky. Are you ready for cooking companions? A little loud. Here we go. I make myself a little bit bigger again, I think. There we go. All right, here we go. New game. This game is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. Do you wish to continue? Sure do. Sure do. There is a tiny little squirrel companion. That walk was brutal, but this cabin is amazing. Full kitchen running water. It really has everything. Finally, a place I can read a good book in peace. I can't wait to T A ah I'm sorry, everyone. It must be the dust. Get those allergies under control, Mariah. Don't worry, guys. I'm with the little elbow grease. We can make this cabin shine. So, are you volunteering to clean, Gregor? No. Too many supplies here. Guess we'll have to go out and get what we need. There's a fireplace for making stew. Let's gather up some firewood, okay? Leave that to me, little guy. I'll tidy up around the cabin. Need to save Mariah from dying due to this dust. <laughs> hey! Allergies are nothing to joke about, Karen. She's not dead yet, Pipsqueak. Calm down. Thanks, Anatoly. I think I'll go foraging outside. With over 450 mosses, 900 funky, and 70 slime molds, there's bound to be treasure up here. Squirrel gumbo, you think so? Mm-hmm. Roughing it is fun. Anatoly knows how much, so much about edible foods. We're in good hands. I think the slime molds will be the most delicious. Most certainly not. What about the fungi? Do you even know which ones are poisonous? I, uh, I can figure it out. You can be the canary in the coal mine. I'm not ending up a corpse here. Keep both eyes open, little guy. Plenty of wolves and brown bears around here. They won't be a problem. I read up on 10 different techniques to incapacitate them. Number one is... Oh yeah, sorry, Mariah. Got carried away again. I'll help him look for food. I'm definitely better at warding off wild animals. If we come up empty-handed, we can always eat some of the food we brought. I thought I... Oop, I did, didn't I? I did not save it. I saved it now. <laughs> Thank you, James. <laughs> I thought I had save. I did not. Bad idea, chump. Gregor is gathering the firewood that makes you our designated chef. Everyone's looking at you expectantly. You nod. Oh, I'm also a character? Oh. Oh, hi, Coco. I hope you're feeling okay. I know you reminded me, but I, f I did. I just forgot to push save. All right, everyone. Let's go to work while there's still sunlight. Later. Mariah, Anatoly, Gregor, the three exit the cabin, leaving you and Karen alone. I think Anatoly put the supplies in the kitchen. Thanks for helping out with the cooking. To save the game, right click or hit escape button. Okay. This menu will also allow you to adjust volumes or exit to the title screen. Going back to the main menu or exiting the game without saving. Okay. So right click is save. Save. 
We saved. All right. I'm glad. Oh, she's going to be a Karen. You know it. Do you have any experiences making meals? Of course. I cook all the time. Looking at you, I think you'd be good at serving up food poisoning. She's a brat. Anyways, going to check out the living room. Let's talk later. Karen heads to the living room and starts dusting a little. You decide to look around the kitchen to find the ingredients for a meal tonight. You never know what you'll find around the cabin. Clues and secrets may be revealed by searching an area more than once. Why not give it a try? What area do you want to search first? We'll go to the cupboards. The first few cupboards are empty. Let's go to the woodpile. There's nothing but cobwebs back in the woodpile. Thankfully, no spiders. Let's look again. <gasps> what do we find? A pile of Norway spruce. Check the cupboards again. Mouse turds and cobwebs. Those look good in the gumbo. Just some dirty knives. Dirty with blood. Dirty with blood. And a mouse hole. Some kind of mold. Cupboards again. <gasps> we found a dead mouse. This will be a great gift to give to Karen. We found a dead mouse. The drawers above the wood pile. Something is making it difficult to open. Pull it open with all your might. Hi, Cabbage. You're adorable. Chomp it! Sound off! Onion! Bread! Raspberry! <laughs> oh, God. Potato's gonna forget his line. Cabbage sucked me into this drawer. I'm pretty sure this counts as kidnapping. We're the Chompettes. Oh my god, this food is adorable. It is dead mouse. You're right. Why talk with those boring humans? All they have to give you is drama. Come chat with us instead. We'll share valuable recipes you can cook. We'll share with you our secret Chompette recipes. Collecting them all to become a five-star chef. Potato. You can find unlocked recipes in the main menu under extra, but be sure to save the game. <clears throat> Our first recipe card. Roasted eggplant with sesame and pomegranate. Meat free. Okay. Okay. If we ever want to talk, just come back to the drawer. Oh God, cabbage. My cabbages! Cabbage literally slams the door closed. You wonder if what you just saw was real. You're slightly worried about what this means for your mental state, but only slightly. Hey, did you find the supplies? You shake your head. And that's really lied. He actually put them in the bedroom. Idiot. Here you go. <gasps> Emergency supplies! Karen leaves you alone. You start a fire with some of the wood to get the work on cooking dinner. Tonight's entree, vegetable stew. In a large saucepan over medium heat, you heat some water, potatoes, carrots, and celery. Hi, egg. 15 minutes later, you drain the pan and set the vegetables aside. Placing some butter in the pan, you melt it over medium heat. Throwing some chopped onions in, you cook for about 10 minutes. The onions are tender and translucent. Perfect. Next, you mix in flour, salt, and pepper, and heavy cream. Hours pass. It took us hours to make a soup? Really? <laughs> Everyone's back. We're back. More firewood than you'll ever need. We found some wild sorrel. Maybe tomorrow we'll have a bigger bounty. Anatoly is burying the lead. We saw a red deer. Karen's a bitch. Yeah, that's right. Anyways, killed 17 spiders today while you were out looking at deer. That should come as no surprise. There's over 160 species of spiders here. <laughs> oh, poor Mariah. 
Don't worry, Mariah. I'm sure they were in the bathroom or something. Almost all of them were near the couch. That's where 16 of them were. I'm not sleeping on that couch then! Hmm. And there's only two beds in the bedroom. Don't sweat it, Mariah. I can sleep anywhere, so I'll sleep in the rocking chair. I'll sleep with one eye open, just in case any of them swarm the couch. How do we know each other? How, like... Literally, these random people in a cabin together. How do we know each other? I snore louder than a lumberyard. <laughs> Sweet dreams, chump. You turn your back to you turn back to your bubbling vegetable stew and try a bite. <gasps> oh, it looks delicious. You settle. <clears throat> Set the table and ask everyone to dig in. Very well endowed, yes. <gasps> I bet they all die. I am not a world-class chef. Uh-oh. Karen! It's bland as hell. Tastes like every other vegetable stew I've had. It's so generic. Could probably use some meat next time. For a side dish, we could bake some bread and utilize strawberries for jam. Nobody cares, Pipsqueak. Everyone laughs at Karen's polite ribbing. Nothing makes you happier than cooking a great meal for friends. This could very well be the best day you've ever had. You go to bed stuffed. Day one? Okay, so it's so chipper. It's so, like, upbeat. How is this a psychological horror game? How'd you sleep? I was so warm last night. I didn't even need a blanket. <clears throat> what time is it? About one hour until dawn. Will you two pipe down trying to sleep over here? Yawn. Gregor, the birds outside aren't making much noise yet. We didn't bring many supplies, remember? Better to get a head start on gathering food. I honestly can't see the trees outside right now. Gregor, did you see any spiders last night? There was a small one in the bathroom. Actually, I did see a centipede by the sink. <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing, Egg? Mariah turns a little pear. Karen's messing with you, Mariah. Let's find more than wild sorrel today. If you're lucky, little guy, maybe I'll teach you how to carry some, uh, catch some wild brown trout. What's with you and meat, big guy? Oh, he's an herbalist. I don't think I've played that. I don't think I played it, but that'd be an interesting twist. Mariah, you know I'm uh, not into meat. That's a shame. I'd wake up early to go fishing. Oh, that's right. Is that, is that Doki Doki? I've been told Doki Doki is amazing, but also very messed up. Maybe we'll see more red deer today. That sounds like a waste of time. Maybe we'll find some black thorn berries. We'll be back later. Can you watch our stuff today? I love that nobody uses my name. They're all leaving. They're all leaving. Okay. I'm alone. <gasps> but we can go talk. Let's go talk to the Chompats. You only get one choice and then the day will end. So choose wisely. Where do you want to check out today? So we can only do, mm, we can only explore one room a day. Okay. That's interesting. Karen and Anatoly kept the room pretty clean. Only one of them made their bed. It's Anatoly. You look underneath one of them. <gasps> Emergency supplies. Okay. So that was the end of our day. Knock it off, Mariah. It's pretty weird to be scared of one. It's not. Uh-oh, what was Gregor afraid of? 
scared of. You don't understand. I don't think anyone understands Gregor. He was just a marmot, not a monster. Everyone's laughing. Sorry, Gregor. She's laughing so hard. She's about to hyperventilate. Stop Mariah from hyperventilating. Absolutely not. One less mouth to feed, right? You don't get it. It's pretty personal. Then please exp How is it being afraid of a marmot personal? Gregor looks incredibly uncomfortable. We found some raspberries and elderberries. Quite the selection of berries. We also found more wild sorrel. Is this going to be enough for a good meal? Ooh, we're going to make cabbage rolls tonight. I don't know if he... Did he ever finish it? I don't know if Jarek ever finished. Cabbage leaves boil. In a medium mixing bowl, you combine cooked rice, onion, egg, salt, and pepper with tomato sauce. Ooh, yummy. Dividing the rice mixture between the cabbage leaves, you roll them up, tie a string around them. So this is soil and green made from people. You place the cabbage rolls in a large skillet over medium heat, pouring the rest of the tomato mixture on top. Covering it, you bring it to a boil. Reduce it to low and let the cabbage roll simmer for 40 minutes. I'm a little nervous that they're all dead. Oh no, maybe. Are we cannibals? I mean, those legitimately look like cabbage rolls and we made vegetable soup before, so. Gregor looks thrilled. You watch intently as everyone takes their first bite. They all look so happy. Ooh, Karen thinks it's delicious. I think the vegetables too tasted better. Cabbage rolls are really good. Something has to be up with the cooking for sure. It's definitely growing on me. Actual cannibal Shia LaBeouf. Thanks again for cooking. This was really something special. Everyone leaves dishes behind for you to do because they're assholes. Everyone goes to bed full. Tomorrow will be another great day. How does this keep spilling on me? It's really bizarre. Good morning, everyone. Gregor likes to get up early. Storm clouds are gathering outside. We need to find some food before it begins to downpour. You're walking in the woods. There's no one around and your phone is dead. Suddenly, you see him. Shia LaBeouf. We have enough food to last us a while. I thought we used most of the supplies for last night's dinner. The meal you made was delicious, but it used a lot of what we had. Gregor's also correct. Perception is unusually high in this. Precipitation is unusually high in this area, with many areas being at risk for flooding. It'd be foolish to not go out and look for food today. You really think it'll flood? Thankfully, the cabin's on high ground, but that doesn't mean we're safe from flood. Oh my god, are we going to get trapped in? Are we going to get trapped in the flood and have to eat out our buddy? Is that what's going to happen? You're losing it, Gregor. 200% <laughs> chance. I think Gregor's right, Karen. Or that's when the demons come out. It won't hurt to prepare for the worst. <laughs> I think she's right, Karen. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Let's go prepare for the storm. Foraging should be the key priority today. There's plenty of edible foods and it has better odds than trying to hunt. Give me a few minutes and I'll plot out our route on some paper. Okay. Okay. 
When given a choice to speak to a character, choose wisely. You can only select one of them. Try to max out your bond with certain characters for unique dialogue and scenarios. Which one would you like to talk to? I'd like to save quick. Um, I don't like Karen. I want to go talk to Mariah. Mariah is paging through some of the books on the bookshelf. You walk over to her. There's some great books here. Which one is your favorite? I like the crafting one. I have to be on brand a little bit. Oh, me too. Metallurgy is so interesting. I'm curious about what ally composition our cauldron is. Our cauldron? I haven't seen one like that before. Anyway, great choice. We got a heart with Mariah. We got a heart with Mariah. <laughs> I didn't know you were so smart. Let's talk again later, okay? You start to blush a little bit. You hear a cheer from the other room. Sounds like the two are wrapping up their meeting. Gregor and Anatoly come back from their meeting. Gregor is blushing slightly. Oh my. Were they making out in the kitchen? Hey, can you cook something while we're out? You nod. Thank you. All right, everyone. We have our route now. Let's beat those rain clouds. The group leaves determined as ever. You have the cabin all to yourself. Is it the Chompettes? Chompettes. Did somebody leave this radio here? It looks newer than anything you've seen before, and it seems to be broken. Better hold on to this. <gasps> we got a strange radio! Um, What do you guys think? What do you guys think? What should we look at? The bedroom, the bathroom, the basement, or the kitchen? I can't... Do you really want to go to the basement? Do you really want to go to the basement so early in a game like this? Do you really want to go to the basement? <laughs> we already went to the bedroom. Should we check out the bathroom? Bathrooms are pretty spooky. Well, then we have to go kill it. So we might just go kill it for Mariah because we love Mariah. You remember an old tale about a child who said a killer's name three times in a mirror. Why would you say that? But she can't remember how it ended. You're too frightened to even try. You leave the bathroom a little more scared than when you entered. <laughs> Mariah's back early today. Hey, the others are still looking for food outside. Anatoly found some more berries, but nothing that will feed all of us. Please don't tell the others, but I'm a little worried about our supplies. I crunched the numbers and we don't have enough food, even with rationing, to last if there's a big storm and we get stuck here. Mariah seems disappointed in your inventory management. Can you try cooking with a little less this evening? Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Reynolds. Thank you. You've done such a great job with meals so far. You're very sweet. She's so cute. We got another heart. That just means I'll eat her last. That just means I'll eat her last. Looking forward to it. Rudely interrupting a tender moment, the others burst into the cabin. Don't be so down on everyone. We got tons of good berries. Cham is so bland without any sugar. Do you have any sugar? You shake your head. Yikes. Turn that frown upside down. <laughs> I think it's cannibalism. I, it's gotta be. I'm not smiling for you, Gregor. You missed out. The sunset was really tremendous on our way back. Hues of orange, red, even a little purple poking out. Red sky at night, sailor's delight. 
That sky in the morning, sailor take warning. So we can expect a sailor's delight tomorrow. That's awesome. We must have walked a few miles today. Gorgeous sights. You could even see snow on the tips of the mountains. That rumble sounded like a dying calf. You look from person to person to try to determine who it was. It was definitely Mariah. Mariah, I'd recognize that sound from anywhere. Mariah looks embarrassed, but the group laughs at her honestly. Except for you. You search your mind for something to say, but all you can think of is an old riddle. <clears throat> Those who have it do not want it. Those who have it least succeed. Those who have it for too long perish. When you feed it, it gets smaller. What am I? Try again, big guy. Everyone is pondering the answer. Mariah's face lights up. Is it hunger? Addiction? <laughs> Egg got it. Egg got it. <laughs> Tonight's dinner is bread and jam. You cooked raspberry jam and bread. Bread's a little tough. This bread stinks. Everybody laughs. That's because it's made out of dead people. Okay, everyone goes to bed. Here we go. Another night's sleep. You go to bed wishing you had more. Just eat your friends. Just eat your friends. It's fine. Something is riding on your back. And it's becoming a nuisance. You try to see it in the mirror, but you can't get a good look at it. You try almost everything, but it won't get off. The pain between your shoulder blades is getting worse by the minute. You wander away from the cabin, stumbling by a river to soak your pain in cool water. You didn't want things to come to this, but you've exhausted all other options. You swim out to the middle. Rocks on the bottom cut your feet. You slip and fall to your knees. You lean back, trying to submerge the thing underwater. But it won't drown. It won't drown. Drown. You splash frantically, plunging your head beneath the water. The current takes you downstream. You try swimming to the shore, but it's no use. Water fills your mouth and nostrils. After a minute, you stop struggling against the current, and you gaze up at the sky. You feel it leaving your back, drifting into the sky as you sink to the bottom. As you take your last gasp, you see what was on your back, staring into your eyes. But you don't even have the air in your lungs to scream. You wake in a cold sweat. Oh, what was that? <laughs> what? <laughs> what was that? You guys, it's getting less cheerful. Sorry, you were making strange noises in your sleep. Well, what's going on, Gregor? Did the lightning wake you up? It woke me up. I tried to fall back asleep, but it's so loud. Ugh, just get back to sleep and talk about this in the morning. Everyone nods in agreement and goes back to bed. You guys. What was that? I can't fall back asleep. You have goosebumps from the nightmare. Karen snoring is louder than a sawmill. You find it very loud and very distracting. You don't sleep a wink. Everyone is now up and awake in the cabin. You hear the front door open and quickly slam shut. Anatoly sounds petrified. I looked out the door and we're completely surrounded by floodwaters. Looks like sailors take warning was more appropriate for today. Maybe it'll clear up tomorrow? You can't steal big guy's optimism, Karen. Why the hell not? That's all he has going for him. Yeah, that was creepy, Eggchon. <laughs> He's also good at chopping wood, though. Knock it off, you two. Mariah, do you think it'll clear up tomorrow? 
I'll give it a 27% chance of clearing up tomorrow. Based on what? I was bored stiff, so I read a book on local precipitation levels for the last 20 years in the living room. I love Mariah. Again, definitely going to eat her last. Sounds like you're stealing Anatoly's thunder. Anatoly, you're a book nerd, right? Why didn't you read it? Ugh, couldn't make it past the cover. Is that right? That bookshelf has some great books on artisan crafting and natural sciences. Why let them sit there gathering dust? How did you arrive at 27% chance of it clearing up tomorrow? It's easy. Take the time of year, multiply it by a factor of... Mariah begins to explain meteorology to you. She isn't dumbing any of this down. <laughs> no, Gabe, does, do these, does this make sense? So the first thing you need to understand, minutes of explanation feel like hours. You look over at Anatoly. He's thinking Mariah's sus. He's listening intently to Mariah. So intently he hasn't blinked yet. You can see his eyes drying up. A tear rolls down one of his cheeks. This is brutal to watch. Mariah finally wraps up her lecture. She ends with a bow. Nobody claps. Tough crowd. By the way, this company that made the dev group that made this game is from Minnesota, and that makes me very happy. You lost me a few times in, but it's okay. A few minutes in, but it's okay. I didn't understand a word of it. <laughs> Anatoly turns to you. Anyway, there's no telling how long this will last. We can't leave the cabin until these floodwaters stop. I know our food situation is a little tight, but I know you'll make the right decisions. I'll eat you last. You're pretty scrawny. I believe in you. Me too. It looks like we have enough leftover berries for more bread and raspberry jam. Everybody laughs. Except for me. With everyone stranded in the cabin, you need to keep everyone fed and happy. You sneak out to the kitchen while everyone's still talking. <gasps> is it time to talk to the Chompettes again? With the kitchen to yourself, you decide to check in on the Chompettes. Yes! Hi, Cabbage. Don't worry. As leader of the Chompettes, I'll make sure none of the humans know about us. That big guy would try eating me like an apple, so definitely don't tell them about us. Are your plans going awry? Yet another cornbread classic for you. Did you hear about the bread maker's bakery burning down? No. Her business is now toast. That one's been done to death. Do you know how raspberry and milk were introduced? You tell her no. Raspberry milk shake. You let out an audible groan. Did cornbread teach you that one? Nope, wasted an entire day thinking about that terrible one. I love that potato is a potato. It was well worth the time and effort, Raspberry. Maybe you'll win the annual Chompette Comedy Competition this year. Not while I'm here, says Onion. I won't choke on stage this year. Isn't that every year bread? Oh my god, look at that cute little face. I oh my god, are we going to have to eat the chompettes? Is that the horror? Or are we crazy because we hear talking vegetables? And we're going to go crazy and kill everybody. Don't even think of eating us if you're hungry. Chompettes stick together through thick and thin. Rain or shine. Feast and famine. Potato! Potato, I swear to God, repeat the line or we're locking you up again. Life or death. That's right. Chompettes, move out. Chompettes somehow manage to close the drawer on themselves. You bring the crusty bread and jam to the living room. Karen interrupts as we bring the food. Took you long enough. Karen looks at the two slices of bread left in the mason jar of raspberry jam. There's mold on these last two slices of bread. Karen is right. What the hell is the matter with you? You grip the knife tightly in your hand. You think this is enough for five of us? Oh god, we're gonna kill somebody, aren't we? We can't throw this bread away. It's all we have left. Gregor's right. And it's holy. Will more spores give us food poisoning? Hmm... Let's pick off as much mold as we can. We can't leave with the floodwaters, so this will have to last us another day. 
Everyone grimly nods, ripping apart their piece like a pack of wolves. Gregor seems to unhinge his jaw and eat all in one bite. He looks like a duck eating bread. Thanks again. Bread and jam isn't much of a meal, but it's more than we had when we left the Ukraine. Plenty of rainwater outside, so at least we won't die of dehydration. But until this storm is over, nobody should leave the cabin. Should clear up if we should give it a chance. Oh, yeah. Who's here? Hi, Kima. I was just seeing it. I think Stream Elements is just offline today. Anatoly, where are you getting that information from? One of the books on the shelf here is about climate. You're illiterate, so that's definitely a lie. <laughs> I've seen him reading. Little guy's been studying. I'm serious. He pretends to read those books because he wants us to think he's smart, but I can tell he's just staring at the page faking it. What do you think? Anatoly doesn't know his weather conditions from a hole in the ground. Karen is correct. I'm not siding with Karen. I refuse to side with Karen. You must be going blind then. I don't know why Karen would make things up like that about me. You aren't fooling anyone, Anatoly. Karen stormed off. Thanks for be backing me up. <gasps> Our relationship is stronger. Good to have someone so positive around. Anatoly looks so relieved. Aww. Let's call it a day. Oh god, are we gonna have another creepy nightmare? Ten minutes later. <laughs> hey, Kara likes to find somebody's weakness and use it against them when she's frustrated. Just wanted to thank you for backing me up earlier. You're very sweet to do that. Anatoly looks at you with a look of admiration. See you tomorrow. Oh god. Oh god, they're all falling in love with me. No! Oh no. <gasps> More hearts. It's just making it harder to eat them later. That's all. You get ready for bed and put a blanket on. You go to bed very hungry. That's fair, James. More heart equals more muscle to cook. You don't dream that entire night, but you sleep through everyone waking up. And that's how fast a deer could run if it startled. We're gonna save the game. Incredible. Impressive. I wish we had a deer here. With the food getting lower, let's just skip today's meal. No. It's only for one day. Various cultures and religions have practiced fasting throughout history. That doesn't make us feel any better, Anatoly. What options do we have? Our food wasn't rationed properly. Is that my fault? It's my fault. Everyone goes to a separate area. Karen in the bedroom, Gregor in the living room, Mariah in the kitchen, and Anatoly in the bathroom. I don't want to go talk to Anatoly in the bathroom. I kind of want to talk to Mariah again. Oh, didn't hear you coming. I was just double checking if there were any food we might have missed, but I couldn't get the drawer open. Could you give it a try? You nod. While you go do that, I'm going to get some more reading done. Aw. Oh, we're going to get three hearts with her. Later. Okay. You give the drawer a hard yank open. <gasps> Chompets. Hello. Hello. Is the thunderstorm keeping up at night? You just need to roll with it. Raspberry whispers so quietly, you lean over to listen to her. Need to talk soon. Please listen to me when the time comes. Anyway. Please don't let the others see us. That's right, Raspberry. Part of being a chompette is secrecy. <laughs> Wouldn't want those humans to overhear our meetings now, would we? Are we not a, a human? Good. Chompettes. <laughs> Roll on out. You shut the drawer. Are we not... Are we not a human? Are we not a human? Wish the rain would stop. You're all doing great. We must almost be the end of this nightmare. I'm so hungry. Me too. 
You are too. You wish everyone a good night and get ready for bed. I'm a little nervous. You go to bed with a growling stomach. Wake up. I said, wake up. The rainfall is nonstop again. Did you have anything to do with this? You don't answer her question. Why is there a heartbeat? Always thinking with your stomach, right? You should reconsider. Might save what little humanity you have left. At least I tried. I won't have a guilty conscience by the end of this. Go back to sleep, monster. What? You easily forget about Raspberry's conversation. You have a strange dream. A boy is yelling at you in the kitchen. You keep telling him to lie down on the tray. But he keeps shaking his head, calling you names. So you do it. You lie down on the tray and make your body as flat as a board. You show him how it's done. His anger turns to courage, and he pushes you into the oven. As the stench of burning hair fills your lungs, you see him sneering back at you. You wake in a... Whoa! Why? Why? Why Hansel and Gretel? Why? Everyone seems to be sleeping in later than normal. Or are they dead? Did we eat them? Their stomachs must have kept them awake all night. The rain is still pouring outside. You can barely make out the trees from the windows. You hear a stirring of blankets, arms, and legs. Mariah looks petrified. I couldn't sleep. Anatoly has bags under his eyes. The storm is too loud. Karen looks out of it. The cabin was creaking so much last night. It sounded alive. Gregor looks a little gaunt. I got a good look out the window. Couldn't see anything due to the rain. Great observation, Gregor. I was so hungry last night, I kept pacing around my bed. Karen turns to you. When is this going to end? I checked outside the door again. Floodwaters keep rising. Unfortunately, we're going to need to stay put unless one of us wants to drown in rainwater. As soon as the weather lets up, we'll be able to scavenge for supplies. How close is the nearest town? I don't know. Didn't you have a map on you? I think I dropped it when we were running after Gregor. I'm sure it'll show up eventually. Mariah and Anatoly go white as sheets. How are we going to find our way back now? Have to ride out the storm. Mariah looks at you. We're down to our last slice of bread. I don't know how much longer we can put off eating. The group stares at you. It will clear up in no time. Maybe you're right. The group looks worried. They all gravitate to an area. Okay, so at the very beginning, it was like, all of your stored recipes are going to be here and blah, blah, blah. There ain't been no cooking. There ain't been no cooking. You can tell Gregor's putting on faked optimism and Mariah's having trouble. Which one do you want to speak with today? Mariah, she's so cute. It's cold as hell over here. I'm surprised Gregor isn't freezing to death at night. How does he do it? You explain to Mariah how size of a person and fat content determine how warm they are naturally. I wish I had a guy. I wish I was as big as Gregor. But to be honest, I don't need to be that tall to make a difference in the world. Oh, she wants to make a difference. Do you know what he wanted to do for a career? Mariah does her best Gregor impersonation. Split firewood and gaze at the stars. How boring is that? Depends on the person, but pretty boring. You're so funny. Thanks for coming in and chatting with me. <gasps> Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. More hearts for Mariah. Mm-hmm. You thank her and leave the bedroom. We're gonna eat them. We're gonna eat them all. You call everyone together. They all look grim. You could cut the tension in the room with a knife. Or you could cut them with a knife. Everyone is staring at you. They're expecting that last piece of bread for dinner. You bring it out and everyone can't take their eyes off of it. You instruct everyone to take a pinch. 
and slowly, all five of you tear it apart like a wishbone. Everyone studies their piece of bread carefully, wondering how long it will last. Karen is the first to eat hers. She chews each bite a few hundred times before swallowing. Anatoly chews cautiously, opening his mouth once he finishes each bite. Mariah nibbles on it silently, eyes wide, moving from person to person. And Gregor... <laughs> Possibly. Possibly cannibalism. Gregor just pops it in his mouth like a cherry. He's a wolf. He's got to be a wolf. It was gone in an instant. The group thanks you awkwardly. It's not much, but you've run out of options. You wish everyone a good night and get ready for bed. You go to bed starving. Here we go. Here we go. By the way, you guys, did you see there were only 100 followers away from our 3,000 mark? We should, we, we, should try to get, we should try to get there. We should try to get there. Just saying. Let me check if the rain has stopped. It hasn't. It's still flooding. What are we going to do? Humans can live two to three weeks without food. Water isn't a concern. Rainfall should end in a day or two, right? Actually, precipitation can occur more than 215 days a year here. But do you really think it will rain that long? It's been days already. What makes you think it will stop soon? Relax, everyone. Let's see how long we can ride this out. Fingers crossed it's done by tomorrow. <clears throat> Panic is slowly creeping in. Everyone's looking scared, but you need to survive. Karen and Gregor begin to discuss next options. Do you want to speak with Mariah in the kitchen or Anatoly in the living room? I'm going with Mariah. Sorry, but I like her a lot. Mariah looks relieved to see you. Just by showing up. That was easy. That was easy. I just had really bizarre deja vu. Is that bad when playing a horror game? Moo! Thank you for the follow. Hey! Hey, you guys! It's their game! This is their game! <laughs> we are we're trying to figure, we're trying to figure it out. Trying to figure it out. Let's ask how. Let's ask if it's more difficult than it was in the Ukraine. My father was a farmer, extremely bite, but extremely stubborn. After they took him, we struggled like all other families, but people kept calling him a traitor, even after he was gone. Our village went mad from starvation after the rationing got extreme. Parents sent their children to orphanages instead of letting them starve at home. It was terrible. Absolutely terrible. True story. I had a boyfriend. <laughs> I had a boyfriend whose uh, sister died of starvation because they couldn't get her to an orphanage. Eventually, we decided we needed to escape. So we stole surprise, su surprise until we had enough for the journey. To keep our spirits up, Gregor described it as a vacation. You usually don't face death during a vacation, though. Thanks for listening. Okay, so are, are Mariah and Gregor related? Mariah walks away, saddened by the memories. You hear Gregor calling everyone together for a meeting. <gasps> What's gonna happen? I don't think any of us can take this much longer. Gregor's voice starts to crack. I don't want to ask this, but it's time. One of us needs to go outside and search for food. Of course, I've been so excited to play this. I'm, st I'm like, I'm on the edge of my seat trying to figure it out. <laughs> I'll go. Mariah's gonna go? No! I used to swim all the time near my house, so I probably have the best chance swimming through the flood. No! Oh, God. We love Mariah. We, we became close to her, and now she's gonna go drown out in the storm. Anatoly, we've never discussed the squirrel on Anatoly's shoulder. You won't get very far if anything happens to your glasses, Anatoly. Steam trading cards and unlockables next week. Heck yes, you guys. Let's get the game. I would tell you to use exclamation mark, uh, exclamation mark showcase. However, right now, my commands aren't working, which is unfortunate. But I will do this. Let me copy this. There you go. If you guys want to grab the link, there she be. 
There she be. You're blind as a mole rat, remember? That's true, but... Oh no, Gregor's... Gregor's crying! Gregor's crying! <sighs> a squirrel. Send the squirrel out. None of these options are good ones, but we need to find food or help. Gregor grabs a branch from the wood pile. He cuts it into... Oh no, are we drawing lots? Are we drawing lots? Since we can't come to a consensus, let's draw for it. We'll each pick one from my hand, and the shortest will go outside and search for food. You're not worried about trying. Is it because I'm not real? You guys, am I not real? Am I like Cthulhu or something? No! Oh, you're real. I watched Anatoly forage earlier, so I'll know what to look out for. Just swim until you find higher ground, then scout the area. God, she's cute, you guys. I'm really sad we're sending her off to her inevitable demise. Maybe we'll find fish out there. Gregor was going to teach us how to catch brown trout. Everyone looks heartbroken. Karen, Anatoly... Gregor, I'll keep us alive. I promise. She promised. Everyone watched as Mariah leaves the cabin. The silence is deafening. Girl! Girl! The door shuts behind her. You can faintly hear her yell about how cold the water is, and then silence. Do 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 so cheery. <laughs> I'm sure we'll see her again. Everyone stays up, waiting and waiting. The sun is completely set. One by one, each person quietly shuffles off to bed. Oh, you guys! <laughs> you guys! <laughs> you have a strange dream. The two women in front of you could be twins. One of them you recognize, the other is a guest. You ask the guest to sit on a shovel. And then you try pushing it into the oven. Her legs are so strong, you can't get her into the oven. You curse at her repeatedly. Like this, you hiss. You stretch out your legs until your toes are almost sticking in the coals. You feel four hands on your shoulders and both of them push you in. The familiar smell of smoke and burning hair causes you to throw up on ember on the embers. You can't let it end like this. You rip the metal doors off the oven, tearing through the wood logs of the cabin. Screaming, you chase the two through the woods. Your burns chill with the wind. The guest looks behind her, and her eyes widen when she sees you. She's terrified. Your fury rips trees out of their roots, soil from the ground, rocks from their pits... You've never been this angry in your entire life. Their stamina can't last forever. You're gaining on them. As you trample through the field of wheat, the guest throws a piece of cloth behind her. You catch the glint of it in the sun, golden. As if by magic, the earth splits in front of you, creating a chasm of fire below. You fall into the pit, screaming as your eyes begin to sizzle from the heat. That's descriptive. Hellfire fills your lungs. You're unable to scream anymore. You wake in a cold sweat. It's been one week since we got to the cabin. <sighs> it's been one week since we've had any meat. Good morning. <gasps> the squirrel's gone. Did we eat the squirrel? Did we eat the squirrel? Do you think she made it to higher ground? I believe in Mariah. Me too. She'll be fine. Right, little guy? So what do we do now? Just wait? Karen? How long? It's been almost a day since she's left. 
It's the gumbo. We're putting them in gumbo. Anatoly and Gregor look nervous. Someone needs to go look for her. Stop sending people into the flooded forest. Wait for what? The nearest town is miles and miles away. Waiting is all we can do for now. So it could be days before she gets back. What are we supposed to eat? Mice? Karen, I'm sure Anatoly will agree, but we'll discuss next options when we get to it. Every waking thought is about food now. I never should have eaten that much. I'm... I'm... Karen's hands are involuntarily shaking. Gregor and Anatoly, just not in agreement. They don't even need her to elaborate. You're sure Mariah will make it back. She promised. Everyone retreats to their areas. What do you want to do today? Um, let's go talk to Anatoly in the kitchen. He's still crying. My poor little schmoopy. The kitchen definitely doesn't feel the same without Mariah. Her laugh, her smile. I never got to tell her how I felt about her. She'll be back, right? Yeah. I wish we had rationed better. You decide to distract Anatoly from his misery with an old story. There once was a villager who had to stock up supplies for the winter. He filled his house with a cow, a sack of grains from the field, and 92 buckets of water, mostly for the cow. He quickly ran out of room as the house wasn't very big. One day, the villager grew sick. He knew he needed the life-giving milk from the cow to survive the water, the winter. But when he attempted to milk the cow, his group was too weak to grasp her udders. In desperation, he began to boil the grains using his buckets of water. The cow cried out for food, but the villager could only afford to feed himself. Each night, the cries of the cow kept him awake, until one day he finally ran out of food. The villager crawled into bed, crying as the snow deepened outside. The cow's sad eyes stared at him. He wanted to comfort the cow, but he couldn't step over the buckets. He was too weak, too sick. The last thing he heard was the cow still crying out for food. One haunting noise to end his life. That was not very cheery. Anatoly looks horrified with your story. You leave him alone in the kitchen. What is wrong with us? <laughs> I can't stop thinking about that vegetable soup. I'll be fine with the bread and jam. I'd be fine with just the strawberries. Ha ha ha. Nobody else laughs. I would kill for some vegetables right about now. You would too. I'm going to try to get some sleep. Good night. Night. You guys, I'm nervous. You fall asleep quickly, but you only dream about desecrating a corpse. Because it's normal. You wake in a cold sweat in a completely different room. Good morning. Karen's looking worse. Will you cook for the group today? I don't have the option not to. Actual cannibal Shia LaBeouf. Where did I get the meat? Where did I get the This is fine. Everything is this. Everything is fine. I ignore Karen's question. Okay, so it's not Anatoly's alive. Anatoly's alive. Gregor's alive. Where did you... The three are looking at you, salivating. You take the charred meat out of the oven, cutting it into small pieces. They immediately grab some off the plate, chewing ferociously. You take a piece and immediately devour it. Do you have any more of this? You explain how the meat is stored securely, hidden, so you can ration better this time. I'm uncomfortable. 
I'm uncomfortable. Anatoly runs to the bathroom, puking in the toilet. You can hear him sobbing for a few minutes. This taste is... Gregor wanders off. Anatoly returns, looking choked up. I was too weak. Left you some of the meat. Don't fight this, Anatoly. Anatoly doesn't like meat. But he's desperate. Finally, my focus is coming back. Good to read some of those books. Keep them occupied, okay? Karen leaves you with the men. Who do you want to talk to? I gotta comfort Anatoly. I feel really bad that I made him eat meat. Anatoly, you slowly open the door. I feel really bad that we made him eat meat. Thanks for checking in on me. You ask if he still feels sick. Not anymore. I think it was a mental thing. Please don't tell me where the meat came from. The less known, the better. He knows. Thank you. He knows. Saddest heart. Saddest heart for Anatoly. I'm just feeding you dead people. It's fine. Mm. Hours pass. The meal gave everyone the perseverance to keep going. Eating will just make them hungrier. They're fine now, but soon they'll be begging for more. We've waited long enough. What's for dinner? You calmly explain that you want to ration the meat better this time and there will be no dinner. I guess I'd rather eat tomorrow than more today. No arguments. Perfect. Everyone decides to call it an early night. You fall asleep instantly tonight. You have a strange dream. You're having a dream with the blacksmith, but he's not touching his food. The only light in the room comes from the oven. He clears his throat, stroking his beard. I can forge anything, he says. Your eye has been giving you issues lately, so you reply, forge me a new eye then. You laugh, but then the ropes come out. He ties you to your chair with a long rope to prevent you from struggling. You rip the ro ropes apart without even trying, so the blacksmith uses a thicker rope. No turning back now. He takes a hot poker out of the coals. Holding it in front of his face, you can see his beard and his eyes watching you. He slowly brings back the poker, aiming carefully for your eye before plunging it through your skull with a sickening crunch. The force of the blow throws you backwards a few feet. You're unable to break the ropes. You vomit all over your chest as the smell of your decimated eye floods your nostrils. The blacksmith stands over you, spitting on your body. You wake in a... Whoa! You wake in a cold sweat. Ma'am, what is happening here? You wake up to see Gregor looking out the window. He turns to you, not smiling. Take a look out the window. Do you notice anything? Is that a dead drum, Mariah? The floodwaters have proceeded a little bit, but everyone is still bound to the cabin. The trail used to be completely visible. It's gone now. Did you hear that voice? Because I heard a voice. Good morning, big guy. Will Mariah make it back? This might sound a little crazy, but every night around 2 a.m., I can hear her outside. She makes this awful gurgling sound like she's trying to get water out of her lungs. Have you heard her, Gregor? Sometimes when the rain gets faint, I think I can hear her whispering. I haven't heard anything like that. When she's whispering... It's like she's trying to tell you something, right? Yeah. Y'all see Gregor's face. Sometimes I hear her crying through the radio. But that's just a broadcast. This is completely everything. Ah! This is this is fine. Everything is fine. I think we should have another piece of meat for breakfast.
One step closer to Mariah. It's what she would have wanted. Bring us another slab. Please. He clearly doesn't have the stomach for it. I can't get that taste of we're, we're fucking cannibals. Gregor looks pained at Anatoly's words. I think he's right. Please bring us more of that meat. <sighs> you grab some of the meat from your secret hiding place. You cut it into squares, adding it to the boiling cauldron water. It will taste bland without any seasoning, but you have to serve it up right away. What is wrong with Anatoly? <laughs> Look, it's almost done. Patience. It's finally finished. You serve the meat in bowls. Meats of evil. Gregor drinks the broth first before swallowing the chunks whole. It's like a duck. What? Anatoly creates ripples in the broth with his spoon. He isn't eating. I'm sorry about earlier, everyone. I don't know what overtook me. Anatoly begins to weep. You look over at Karen. You didn't notice her even starting to eat. There's just an empty bowl now. Karen is staring right at you. How much more meat is left? You explain how most of it has gone bad. This is the last of it. How could you be so careless again? You remember Karen's knife. You need to think fast. What the hell are we supposed to do now? Wait around again? This storm isn't ending. You clear your throat. Anatoly, yes? I think tomorrow you should look for Mariah. No, are we sending them out into the woods and then we're going and killing them and then we're eating them? I mean, eat the vegetarian because he doesn't want to eat the meat anyways, right? Or forage for plants outside. I think you should go tomorrow, little guy. Nobody else can identify edible plants like you. You can swim back after a few hours. Gregor is right, Anatoly. Maybe you'll find Mariah out there. I think Mariah's fine by herself. She still hasn't accepted what's happened yet. Oh, they haven't. Oh, no. We just ate. Mm. We ate Mariah. <laughs> she doesn't need anyone's help, but we need your help, Anatoly. Please help us. Let me sleep on it, okay? No problem, little guy. Oh, no. We're asking him to help us because we're asking him to be our f next food. The onion. <laughs> onion! Not going to be very sweet today. I'm worried about Anatoly. He's going to cave to peer pressure. Can you stop him from leaving the cabin? Please? Don't you trust me? You shake your head. Got a fun factoid for you. Did you know that leaving out an unpeeled onion in your room absorbs bacteria? It will help prevent colds and ward off viruses. Onion. That was a lie. The fun factoid of that myth, people actually believed it in the 1500s. How embarrassing. Who would believe that? There even was a doctor in 1919 who caught, caused a surge of people believing it. Anyways, you know what smells like a raw onion left in a room? You. It's been a while since your last bath, right? You can't remember, because smell you before I even came into the room. Onion. I haven't showered, but there's plenty of water. I could literally just go outside. I will, it will be impossible to stop a grown man from leaving. Please, we don't need another one stalking the hallways. Tapping on the windows, crying through the video. You have a sudden urge to scream. Why do you think I've been using the mouse holes to get around? Onion. Scared to death, I'll run into her. Don't make me tattle the cabbage about you. She can be as mean as potato if you get on her bad side. Onion. Onion. Just kidding, she's great. Anyways, 
When the time comes, just tell Anatoly you care about him and don't want him to leave. Even if it's for me, okay? Even the vegetables are afraid. You can trust me. Now, if you excuse me, I need to work on some <laughs> ice skates. They're made of butter slices, so I'll get to skate around the frying pan tomorrow. I'm uncomfortable. <sighs> Your mind finally manages to forget everything that happened. You fall asleep again, still ravenous. You have a strange dream. Not another dream. A fox is collecting payment in your living room. You despise him, so you put two dogs at the bottom of a sack, then add six chickens on top. The fox smiles at you and leaves. At some point in his journey, the fox will eventually open the sack, and the dogs tear the fox in half. Filled with such loathing for the fox, you give him the only things you had for food. All of those chickens. As the snow piles up outside, you begin to eat whatever you can find. Pillowcases, candles, leather. One day you wake up and you have nothing left to eat. Absolutely nothing. Just an insatiable hunger. A few days later you go mad and leave the cabin, completely ravenous. A nearby tree looks like charred meat. Your iron teeth cut through the tree bark, tearing your gums apart with splinters. Your mouth fills with blood quickly. Days later a deer gallops by, the first creature in the woods to see your corpse. You wake in a cold sweat. Something smells terrible in the living room. Someone puked in the corner. You wipe it up with a rag to save them the embarrassment. Good morning. Good morning, little guy. Well, Anatoly? Barely slept last night. Her whispers came through one of the holes in the floor. Is it Onion? She kept telling me to come outside. We don't want to rush you, but one of us puked last night. So that's what that smell was. My patience is wearing thin. You have one hour to make a decision. Wh why so quickly? Because I'm not waiting any longer. You can see the glint of Karen's knife under her dress. Best to watch out for that knife. The group disperses. Tensions seem to be rising. You have one hour to kill. Okay. Okay. Because of this game, it says you have one hour to kill, but I read it as you have one hour to kill. And I was like, kill who? We haven't been to the basement yet. Okay, 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 okay. Should we talk to the Chompettes? Or do we want to chat with Anatoly? Onion told us to get Anatoly to not leave. What do we do? <laughs> I hate Karen. Gregor, I met on. Chompettes or Anatoly? I'm going to listen to Onion. We're going to go talk to Anatoly. Anatoly looks pale. Thanks for coming over. Anatoly seems comforted by your presence. More hearts is more dead. Gregor told me he's heard Mariah. I'm sure Karen isn't being honest with me. Have you checked out the basement door closely? Every so often I can see her peeking out at me through the holes. I really don't want to drown outside, but at least I won't have to have her tormenting me anymore. You know what's in the basement, don't you? I don't. Wow. You aren't kidding anyone you're just lying to yourself please get away from me you call everyone together for a meeting do i know what's in the basement anatoly you okay little guy anatoly looks pale like he's gonna pass out have you made your decision yes i'll help you all out i promise thank you anatoly Big tears roll down Gregor's cheek. I'll, I'll miss you, big guy. I'll miss you too, little guy. Thank you, Anatoly. I know this wasn't easy, but it's for the best. He's so handsome. Gregor looks at you expectantly. Do you want to say anything to Anatoly? You say nothing. I should have stopped him. Uh, 
Da, 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 da. Oh no. <laughs> Suddenly we have meat again, I bet. See you all soon, little guy. I guess all we can do now is wait. Karen goes to the bedroom to sleep. I didn't tell him the truth. Gregor's getting choked up. I didn't tell him. Missing him already. Oh no. Gregor curls up on the couch for the night, turning his back to you. You shut your eyes, quickly falling asleep. You hear a scraping from the floor. <gasps> it's just bread. Found you. You explain how this isn't a good time right now. This is no laughing matter. I'm worried about Gregor. He's as tall as a tree, but as dumb as a brick. What's the root of that? Ha ha ha. Another cornbread classic. You're being very un- popular right now that's a tree reference get it anyway you need to protect gregor from that red-haired woman cabbage called an emergency chomp at meeting and told me to give you this mission watch out for that knife and protect gregor at all costs understood i understand it's the yeast you can do right you tell bread that pun didn't make sense on a roll today, I'll see you around. Bread hops away, squeezing himself through the mouse hole with a small pop. You fall asleep, thinking about what Bread told you. I need a drink. <laughs> we have another strange dream. It's lying on the table in front of you. You take off the glasses first, partially cracked, and set them down next to the workbench. No, it's Anatoly's glasses! <laughs> no! Working the saw, you wrap the cuts in an old newspaper. Some of it gets soggy immediately, so you begin drying the cuts with a towel, but we're wrapping. Much better. You hear something approaching you, so you clench your fist and get ready to strike what's coming for you. You wake in a cold sweat. Because Anatoly had glasses. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. You wake in a completely different place. Did you sleepwalk or? Da, 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 da. You decide to cook breakfast for everyone. Cutting each slice fairly thin, you brown each side in the oven. The smell is unique. Karen runs into the kitchen. What is that smell? Give it to me now. You don't argue. Karen grabs a cutlet, burning her hands before bringing it to her mouth. She hungrily devours it, barely chewing. She grabs another cutlet off the plate and eats it. You thought she was concerned with rationing. Gregor wakes up from the couch and heads to the kitchen. Oh God, already? Gregor looks conflicted, but he succumbs to the hunger. They always do. Gregor eats his food in a few bites, carefully grabbing a second cutlet. The tears start streaming down his face, but he doesn't make a sound. You join them in the meal, quickly consuming the meat on the table. I can think straight again. We'll be out of here in no time. No need to rush on anything now. Karen is sounding more determined than before. I'm going to lie down on the couch. Try to keep this food down. Gregor crawls onto the couch, turning his back to you. Karen leans in to whisper, I'm glad Mariah and Anatoly are gone. They were stopping us from bonding properly. How did you get so good at it? You tell Karen. After one bite, it just made me feel whole again. Even with the nightmares, it's worth it. It took a few nights, but I fought back, and now it's all I can think about. I read about a book on... <laughs> no text is ancient, but the diagrams are beautifully drawn. Very descriptive. How many years did it take you to perfect the craft? Yeah, right. I used to tell Mariah that you weren't funny, but that's not true. Sorry about that. You've grown on me. Karen pauses deep in thought. You know Gregor can't swim, right? He'd be the next to leave, but he doesn't stand a chance outside. 
they always seem to come back, right? In one way or another. Why wait for him to come back? Aaron hands you a vial of liquid. I think you know what needs to be done. This is a strong anesthetic. Don't ask me how I found it. I want you to slip it into Gregor's mug tonight. This is for the best. He won't feel any pain until he wakes up. All you have to do is stand back and let me work on him. The request is beyond extreme. Will you do this for me? <coughs> I need to psych myself up for what's next. This is my first time and I want it to be perfect. I'm just, I'm just going to flat out tell her no. I ain't doing her dirty work. I ain't doing her dirty work. Fine. Save that for a rainy day. I have everything set up by the couch. You don't have to watch. The restraints should be easy to apply myself. Gregor's strength is a farce. Gregor, hi. Hey, Karen. What are you doing? Untie me. Oh, my God. This will be over soon, Gregor. Oh, no. Oh, no. Why don't I go stop? Why? Have... Why don't I go stop? <laughs> You leave her alone, going into the bedroom and crawling into bed. Anatoly slept in. You fall asleep almost instantly. Why didn't I go stop her? Wake up, sleepyhead. You were having a nightmare. Oh, sh no. Why? Thanks for letting me practice last night. I think I did a great job. Made us all some breakfast this morning to celebrate. Gregor already finished his. Took a few hours, but he caved. Come on, let me show you. Ah, you guys. You got out of bed and head to the living room. He's a little weak from the blood wasp, but don't worry. Bandaged him up like a field medic. What is it, Gregor? Where am I? God, you're stupid. Maybe if you spent as much time reading books as chopping wood, you would have noticed the pages I was book. Oh, no. What are you talking about? Do I have to spell it out for you? You can't swim. How are you supposed to help us out when you'd immediately drown? You'd sink like a log. I put some of your limbs away for safekeeping. That leg was pretty tasty, huh? How's that for a big breakfast? And don't try to crawl away. If you leave this couch, I'll end you. I don't want any of it to go bad, so we'll have to eat that fresh arm when everything else is gone. Speaking of which, I'm gonna go start cooking another chunk now. I'll leave you two alone to chat. This has gone too far. Hey, all I wanted to do was keep everyone alive and together, but I failed at that. Are you, are you disappointed in me? Oh, that's the moment my cat decides to jump up into my lap. <laughs> I'm not disappointed in him. Thank you. That means a lot to me. Growing up, nobody had to tell me to be big and strong. It just happened naturally. My mother always made sure I never went hungry. Seconds, thirds, fourths, and yet I complained my belly wasn't full. One day on my way home from school, I was walking by the town inn and smelled something amazing coming out of a pile of trash. I dug through it and discovered a bag. They threw away a meal that was fresh out of the oven for some reason. Yeah, he's just chilling for having had three limbs amputated. At least that's what I thought. I became ill became ill with food poisoning. I hugged the toilet and cried for hours. My mother rubbed my back and eventually carried me to bed. I learned nothing from that experience. Like everywhere else, I was just here for the food. I'll never get this foul taste out of my mouth. She's going to keep eating me. I'm sorry. Getting too lightheaded to hold a good conversation. Ha ha ha. She's going to torture me again. You know that, right? Gregor grows a little more pale. Can you cover me with a blanket? I've never been this cold. This cabin, it chills me to the bones, or what's left of them. Please, consider it my dying wish. Thank 
you. Much warmer now. Watch out for that knife, okay? Gregor begins to look at peace. You watch the last of Gregor's air escape his lungs. The hell do you think you're doing? You tell Karen that Gregor gave up. You could have kept him alive for another week. What's wrong with you? Plenty of food left now. Karen leaves you alone. You head to the kitchen to try to find the other remains. Gregor! You look at the pile of dishes and your mind starts to wander. Oh. Is now the best time, Cabbage? There are five of us to find. The red-haired woman should know where the basement key is. And I bet one of us is hiding down there. <laughs> Probably best to avoid that knife. Isn't that your knife? Why did you let her have it? I gave her the knife? So please don't forget any of us. Cabbage rolls away and tries to hide. Why would Cabbage want to play hide and seek right now? You have been neglecting the chompettes lately. Can't hurt to play along with them, right? You go talk to Karen in the living room. The fuck is going on? Looks like Karen is just slicing away at a block of wood. Gregor's remains have been stored for safekeeping. Scrubbed all the blood out of the couch to save you the trouble. <laughs> Thank you. Wasn't it in the kitchen? You can't remember. I haven't seen the key. Maybe one of the chompettes can help you find it in the kitchen. You just had to go look for it. What's in the basement? <laughs> Where would you want to check first? Still filthy. Okay. You hear some rustling around. <gasps> we found cabbage. Wee! Well done. As leader of the chompettes, getting through the mouse hole is a chore. Yeah. I can't can't find any of the chompettes to push me through. So I guess you'll have to help me out. Cabbage joined our party. Four chompettes to go. Keep it up. You'll be a member of the chompettes in no time. You ask Cabbage about the basement key. <laughs> okay, if we become a member of the chompettes, does that mean she killed us and she's eating us? <sighs> okay. Yeah. Right, Marie. <laughs> right. <sighs> All right. She's. Oh. <laughs> Cabbage rolls down the hallway. Can't hurt to find onion, right? Found onion. 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 onion! I'm sweet as sugar cane. Honest. Wow, your breath stinks. Drenched head to toe in sweat, too. Could smell you coming a mile away. Were you scared of the red-headed woman or something? You tell Onion the truth. Sounds like I missed some messed up stuff. You get a pass. I'm sorry to hear about Mariah, Anatoly, and Gregor, but yikes. That's three people gone in less than a month. Not as bad as five people in one night, though, right? I would probably lose my lunch if I had to see that again. Again? What? What? Didn't mean to be rude. I got your back. Hello. Hello. Glad to have you with us, Onion. I heard bread making noise in the living room. Oh, my God. OK, let's go get bread. Oh, God, she poisoned us. She poisoned us. Uh, 
Oh, she poisoned us. Mother dicks, she poisoned us. Everyone's secretly favorite chop pet bread. Don't you loaf me? My cousin Crowbread taught me that one. He has hundreds. No, thousands of terrible puns. He's my role model. So what do you need? You tell Bad about the gathering, gathering the chomp bats together. That's a pretty crummy idea. Remember what happened last time with Potato? I mean, we all chose to be in that drawer, but this? You're going against the whole grain here. Do you really think we want to go back downstairs? <laughs> I would never let the Chompettes down. <sighs> Glad to have you on board, Bread. I'm getting more and more depressed as the minute goes on. The Chompettes are staring at me? You accidentally licked your lips. Cabbage is angrier. What? You already ate. We're no good for that. Their voices are like weird now. You glutton. Did they pass out? Holy cow, get them up. So heavy. You stumble to your feet. Let's go find Raspberry and never speak of this again. I think her I heard her over by the basement door. What is going on? Your head feels like it's going to crack open. Your hands have gone completely numb. This one is lasting longer than the others. You focus on wiggling your toes for a minute. And you didn't pass out cold on the floor. Congratulations. Congratulations. You go check out the basement door. You feel a chill run up your spine. Goosebumps are all over your body. There she is. The birds outside turn silent. You could hear a pin drop. You can almost hear her breathing. You feel the sudden urge to scream. Can't sneak up on me. Don't ever try that again. What? Because sometimes I have to be scared, son. Scary, son, okay? We need your help finding Potato. Our combined Chompet detective skills say he's in the basement. Let's find Potato and get out of here. You guys, Raspberry's mad at us. The basement is already unlocked. The red-haired woman is coming over here. Chompettes, let's hide out. All four Chompettes quickly escape. You pretend to be studying the basement door. You hear Karen creeping up behind you. Found you. You can see the knife out of cor the corner of Karen's dress. I don't know if I can wait any longer. Show me where you keep hiding the meat. Let's tear them apart. Peace. By peace. Just like Gregor. Karen looks like she's ready to bury the knife into you. What do you do? My god, you guys, what do we do? Do we tell her about the basement of the Chompettes? What's the worst that could happen if we tell her about the Chompettes? I need that treat. Thank you, cowboy. What, I don't know what this is, but I think this is a big choice. I don't know what this is. It's in like Portuguese or something weird, but it looks delicious. And it is.
What do you think, Wackers Bonkers? Kill him. You're naughty, Wackers Bonkers. Hmm. I don't want to betray the Chompettes. So that's why it's locked. Open it. I have to see the room. I'll bring up some cutlets and we'll have a great dinner. See you soon. Aaron descends the staircase into the darkness. I did lock the door, Karen. You block out the screams of rage and bargaining. Give it enough time, they will end. You crawl into bed and go to sleep. I needed that. It was like coconut and white chocolate with a hazelnut in it. It was delicious. Thank you, cowboy. We sleep in today. The pounding has completely stopped. You really need to go to the bathroom. You decide to open your eyes. I'm already in the bathroom? The glow of the candle is oddly comforting. The candle blew out. And the door is locked. You find a flashlight in the corner of the bathroom and turn it on. You're in the dark, but you're not alone. Click on the objects around the bathroom to get more information or to find hidden clues. If you're stuck, just wait a little bit to see the glint of objects in to inspect in the bathroom. Just move around your cursor and search. Um. Cabbage. Hi, Cabbage. Are you locked in the bathroom again? You tell her about the candle being blown out. Maybe you just need to try wiggling it a little bit. <clears throat> okay. Sometimes the simplest method is the best one. Now, if you excuse me, need to conduct the next secret chompette meeting. Okay. Um. Just wiggle a little bit. Well, getting locked in the bathroom is enough excitement for one day. You get under the covers and sleep. It's been two weeks. You're speaking Ukrainian at us. Just your imagination again. Karen can't still be alive, right? Somebody's at the door. You grip the doorknob tightly, getting ready for what's next. You saw that, right? The haunt has officially begun. The what? Some spirits move on immediately, others linger, and some... Some stop at nothing to give you a heart attack. Or you get to fall down a flight of stairs. Or because you wander into an early dense demise. No way of knowing which one the group will choose? The rain has stopped outside. You decide to go look out the window. There was something in the woods. The floodwaters are completely gone. Karen would appreciate the good news, but not after locking her in the basement. No good reason to leave the can cabin. Plenty of good food now. You've been so busy you've forgotten to eat. You head to the kitchen for a snack. Karen's hiding spot was too obvious. You take a few bites of meat. You lost more of your humanity. Not fresh enough. Oh, well. You decide to crawl back into bed and get a little extra sleep. You have a strange dream. The clouds have parted. The rain has gone away. You wake in a cold sweat. The hell 
hell is going on? Is this another trick or... Say eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine. You head to the kitchen to get breakfast. Your food is gone. That noise was coming from the living room. Nobody's here. Just some deep scratches are dug in the wood by the couch. Something is approaching. What's making that noise? Karen, I got your number. I'm gonna eat your legs. Sounds like it was coming from the basement door. You go over to investigate. A cold wind is blowing through the hole in the door. You get goosebumps all over your arms. Is this a... What was that? You wake in a cold sweat. Okay, back to day 14. Okay. Okay, ma'am. It's raining again. They're taunting you with dreams of sunny days. You get out of bed and head to the living room. You can still smell Gregor here. Should you have intervened with Karen? It probably wouldn't have changed the outcome. It also might have led to your death. The couch is still comfortable, even after Gregor imprinted on it. You decide to take a nap, which quickly turns into sleep. It's been 84 years. You must have woken up too early. The cabin living room is pitch black. You pick up a flashlight nearby to explore the darkness. God, I don't... Ah. Uh... Ah. Ah. They're still knitting on the floor. You notice a note sticking out from one of the books. I know you've been ignoring my other letters, so I'm begging you, please bring back my daughter safely or I will need to get others involved. I've left payments outside the door. I will pay any price. Please let her go. We don't have to involve anyone else. You take the mother note with you. You decide to lay back down on the couch and get your rest. What the fuck is going on, you guys? <laughs> Kudos, you guys. Kudos to Dear Dream Studios for making a really intriguing game so far. You sleepwalk again. You can hear Potato mumbling in the drawer. Oh, it's you again. Tell me, in that first week with the red-haired woman and the others, where did you sleep? You think for a minute, but you come up with nothing. It's worse than I imagine. If I can be honest, it was truly horrific to witness. Still nothing? You would routinely collapse in the middle of the hallway, sleepwalking into walls, or worse, going down into the basement. I can't believe you haven't broken your neck on those stairs yet. You seem to survive almost anything. Do I have that right? Must be that addiction to meat, or something else. Would you share that secret with me? Sure. You tell Potato the secret. Wow, didn't think you'd be foolish enough to tell me. I'm living longer than expected already, but this is good information to take with me. Thank you. Was that the right thing to tell Potato? Apparently not. It's a delight to watch you fall apart. What does the red-haired woman have in store for you? You haven't thought about Karen in a while. How many days has she been down there? Do you realize she's probably been feasting on the three? She'll be much stronger than the last time you saw her. Go downstairs and put an end to this. Not for the Chompettes, just for me. This is why Potato was playing dumb, you guys. You head to the basement. 
I don't want to go. <laughs> I don't want to go to the basement. I don't want to go to the basement. I don't. <laughs> I don't want to go to the basement. <laughs> I don't want to go to the basement. Can you hear me? I've been down here the entire time. It's so good to see you again. There's plenty of bread down here. Why aren't you saying anything? I'll never forgive you for what you did. You put Anatoly through hell. You desecrated my corpse. You gave them that disgusting hunger. All of that is water under the bridge now. Anatoly's down here. Come have some bread with us. They always try things like this. Their anger, concentrated near their grave, leads to tricks and traps. You're not falling for this one. Why aren't you listening to me? There's bread down here, loaves of it. Fine. I won't stop you from finding the others down here. One piece of advice? Beware of Karen. She's ill beyond repair. Gregor will try to talk you out of reaching the room. Anatoly will try to talk you into leaving the cabin. And Karen will rip the flesh from your bones. We'll talk again. Thank you for being kind to me. I didn't believe the whispers at first. At first. You feel Mariah leaving the staircase. You go deeper into the abyss. I don't want to go deeper into the abyss. The walls down here, they're dirt and soot. Something is approaching. I don't wanna. I'm glad I found you. The rain outside has stopped. Did you hear that knocking? Another trap. Everyone's upstairs and wants to leave. Mariah's worried sick about you. You tell Gregor about speaking with Mariah. Guess I can't lie to you, huh? You just stood there while Karen took my limbs, doing nothing. Are you frightened by her? If you won't come upstairs with me... Please turn on the light when you reach the room. I want to see the look on your face when that light bulb turns on. Can you do that for me? Thank you. Thanks for letting me lick the bowls clean. That was enough to keep him at bay. We'll meet again soon. Beware of Karen. I don't want to! <laughs> The air pressure down here feels greater. You're getting closer to Karen with each step. Something is approaching. <laughs> oh, thought you'd still be fending off that glutton Gregor right now. You tell Anatoly about meeting with Gregor. Oh, I was going to try to see if you wanted to pick onions with me. You shake your head. Guess there's no fooling you, huh? You survived this long. I can't tell if I'd rather have you or her sticking around down here. You ask Anatoly where Karen is. Oh, she's just below us, waiting to devour you. You guys, did I pick the right costume for tonight or what? Karen's been practicing her butchering again. Maybe she'll start with your arms. Down here... The whispers have told me about you. I can't even believe some of the things you've done. Worse than any war crime. So many whispers about those sorts of things. So many whispers down here. It ends at the bottom. Karen might be alive down here, but you won't be. See you again soon. You feel Anatoly leaving the staircase. <sighs> you grit your teeth and keep going. Your feet finally hit solid ground in the basement. 
Something doesn't feel right. Feel around the while blindly to locate the light switch. Hello. Hello. You've come so far. Proud of you. Cabbage, cabbage. As leader of the Chompats, I wanted to let you know we have your back. <laughs> no matter what happens down here, just call out to us and we'll be there. Boy, boy. Boy, Honest. Boy. Wouldn't let you die down here. When you yeast expect it, we'll roll with you. You can't sneak up on me. But sneaking up on you? Extremely easy. Are you deaf? Raspberry. That was pretty cruel even for me. Your ears have so much dirt in them, they could probably grow potatoes. Right, the last words that escaped my mouth. Save me, onion! I don't know why we're seeing talking vegetables and food, man. I don't know yet. They were in the drawer at the beginning of this game, which started out as a dating sim with cooking elements. We'll have to work on those jokes, Potato. Weren't you hiding in the basement room? Circumstances have changed. I wouldn't miss a killing for the world. Just remember, down here, you can call on us. We'll help you out in a bind. And if you get lost down here later, please avoid the room where it happened. Where what happened? I can't speak for the others, but I'd like to forget what happened there. I don't think we'll ever forget that potato. But thank you for coming along with us. I wouldn't call it a change of heart because you really never had one, Potato. You should have rotted down here, but I'm glad you're here to help. Wish I had a joke here, but what you did was no joking matter. That's enough. Chompettes! Let's help out. The Chompettes get in position behind you, ready for what's next. You feel around the wall blindly and locate the light switch. She's going to be really scary looking. Oh, no, she's she's fine. Let's end this here. What? You should have kept the doors locked. Y'all, I'm saving this real quick. Karen lunges at you. Ah! We're using vegetables to help us, I guess. Thanks, Cabbage. Please survive the fight. We want to play hide and seek again. Okay. The cut is deep. This will need to be treated if you want to make this out alive. Karen catches her breath. You should have kept the door locked. Well, I'm really glad that I... We're like doing nothing to her. Will you fit in the cauldron? Okay. I'm not reading everything because I'm really freaking creeped out right now. Okay. 
Okay. We are both pretty awful. Potato is not wrong. Karen is about to take your life. Combats. Sorry for not helping you much down here. Then again, you didn't help us much down here. It will be fascinating to see what happens if you lose. You're not feeling any better. The Chompets have stopped helping. Karen glares at you. Okay. Karen quickly stumbles down the hallway, turning left at the end. You're hobbling after her, but the room is pitch black here. The rot of decaying flesh in here is nauseating. You can hear the small echoes of Karen's footprints prints disappearing below, making this room feel enormous. You can't see their eyes, but you can feel them. You're being watched. The staircase in the center winds downward, spiraling into the abyss. You're getting lightheaded again. Gravity almost gets the best of you a few times as you work your way down to the bottom. Your shoes stick to the floor when you reach the bottom. The smell of mildew and something rotten makes you gag. You can barely make out the outline of the door frames in each direction. You head east, opening the door. You feel Karen's presence close by. together again drowned and dissected the butcher of hope has returned where's karen lost in the abyss her rage blinds her ravenous completely ravenous she will never be able to move on bound to this cabin by you she will never escape those that die in the cabin are bound to different rules. Fleeing west did nothing. Victims will always gravitate to this cabin. Always find a way to you. You wretch. You abomination. You horror. Turn on the light and savor your inhumanity. Right? Ah, zombies! Turn on the light. Turn on the light. Turn on the light. Reap what you have sown. Aya, Anatoly, Gregor, Aziz, light! Karen, I'll never forget you. Oh no. Fucking companions. Um. <laughs> Thank you for more story after the credits. <laughs> What was this game? What was this game? I picked a very suiting Cheshire cat grin for tonight. Oh no. Oh, guys, buckle in. There's more. There is more. Written and developed by Dear Dream Studios. Well done, Dear Dream Studios. Woo! I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Slender Girl. 
cousin of Slenderman. <sighs> wow. This was really <laughs> wow. This game was starting out so like do to do to do fun dating cooking sim threw me through the loop with like your recipes will be in your thing here don't forget to save and then eating people and death and talking vegetables that are turning on us what hmm <laughs> there's a ban right there thank you it pains me that Giant Bomb only played the cute part. Really? They only they didn't get into like the deep dark. I saw I saw it posted on your guys' Twitter that uh, that they played it. They didn't get all the way to the creepy. Oh my god! <gasps> Achievement unlocked. Not done yet. Okay. You hear talking upstairs. Thieves? Excuse me. You grab your flaying knife and silently go up the stairs. You'll eat well tonight. Excuse me? The four look completely shocked at the sight of you. We... She doesn't look like she has the courage to speak. We've been lost for a few days. Your cabin is the only hut we've seen out here. Can we stay here for a few nights? You clear your throat and ask the questions you've asked thousands of times. Did you come on your own free will or were you sent? We were technically sent. Anatoly, we came of our own free will. The woman looks confident in her answer. They answered incorrectly you clear your throat again coughing profusely you may stay in the cabin until you're ready to leave the group looks terrified of you as they should be wasn't that trail steep yeah the group finally returns to normal it's forced but they attempt to save face that walk was brutal, but this cabin is amazing. Full kitchen, running water, it really has everything. Finally, a place I can read a good book in peace. You already know the rest of the story now, right? Wrong. Welcome to Nightmare Mode. Boy, we are saving the game. If you survive, you will gain some additional insight into the world of Cooking Companions, as well as unlocking New Game Plus and a Chompets only event. <laughs> this mode is mostly just a joke, so don't take it seriously. If you make it to the end, you'll unlock the Chompette's cabin courses and Chompette only event free of humans. For the true cooking companions experience, this mode should be played in a pitch black room with headphones. Okay, I have headphones on. My room is dark, but I do have my lighting on. But I do have my lighting on. You guys. <laughs> no, thank you. They want to watch me play it so they don't have to. Oh, uh, if you still need to max out your relationships, don't worry. You'll get the opportunity to do so. You should really make a manual save right now. I did. I did. I'm going to save in a new slot, though, just to be safe. Thank you for getting this far. Your bravery is commendable and will be rewarded. Thanks for playing. You're welcome, guys. Nightmare mode activated. Oh god. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. What is gonna happen? You wake up in the bathroom again. Oh, there's so oh my god. It 
It's cold, but I can look at you. Look at me. Are you scared? Run! <laughs> I was pushing it and it didn't do anything. <sighs> Your surroundings feel completely different. Mariah's presence is enraged. She's beckoning you to follow her. You get up and leave the bedroom. It's a beautiful sunny day outside. What a fitting end to such a horrible nightmare. You head to the kitchen for some breakfast. It's going to be covered in blood. I told you! This will take ages to clean. You take a few bites of meat. We lost a few more of my humanity points. You stare into the ash pile in the oven. Are they still upset? You head back to the bedroom to take a nap. I love that it's meat. Oh God, the bedroom. <laughs> There's so much death. Which part of them is causing this? Mariah, Anatoly, Gregor, K. You crawl into bed and fall asleep. Normally, naturally, in a room, a room full of blood. Naturally, we just go to bed. We don't even care. We just go to sleep. Ah. Oh. Absolutely will. I've actually will put this all up on YouTube as well. Thank you so much for joining us for as long as you did your dream studios. Really appreciate it. This has been amazing. Wake up, sleepyhead. Karen isn't here. It sounds like she's whittling something again. Did she escape the basement? Karen? No reply. You head over to investigate. Another trick by one of them. Who's still missing? Karen? Someone's tapping on the window. Anatoly question mark? They're getting more bold in their actions. You head to bed to sleep on it. We're going to end on day 66, 666. The sheets are drenched in sweat. You catch something moving out of the corner of your eye. You roll out of bed to see what it is. Nothing is moving around the bedroom anymore. The bedroom was covered in blood like a night ago. Oh, I don't want to go to the basement. Uh, she's going to poop. She's going to poop. <laughs> she's not going to. She's going to poop her eye out. A cold wind blows through the crack in the door. Ah, she was so scary looking. Wake in a cold sweat. You wake up on the cold bathroom floor. The door is locked. Did one of them hide the key in here? Where do you want to check first? Under the tub. Mouse poops and dust have gathered under the tub. This needs to be swept. Garbage can. It's empty, like your soul. You know, fair. At this point, fair. Do the chompettes do this? <sighs> under the tub again. Some scratches on the side of the tub. What happened here? Look in the back of the garbage can. Just a gigantic spider back there. Disgusting. Yes, I'm worried about the fucking spider right now. Stick your arm in the mouse hole. No. Yes. You feel the chilly presence of something behind you. The key is pushed into your hand. You pull your arm out, lifting up the toilet seat to take a celebratory bathroom break. Your hands are shaking uncontrollably. The key has fallen into the toilet. Of course I'm reaching into the toilet. God. Oh, God. Raspberry's back. Raspberry! You really put your hand in that filthy backed up toilet, huh? This seems to be a new low for you. Are you finally going to wash your hands now? The sink isn't working. Oh, wow. Will the bacteria be the thing that does you in? 
Such a pathetic end for a terrible life. Ha ha ha. That key wasn't even for the bathroom door. That was the key to the Chompette's treasure box. You really stepped in it this time. Cabbage told me I had to rescue you from this. I wanted to let you starve to death in here, but she insisted. Here you go. This is the last favor you'll get for me. Goodbye, wretch. You let out a deep breath and exit the bathroom. It's time to end this. You open the door and get ready for what's next. Are we going to go fight Karen again? It's just a staircase. Nothing to be scared of. You begin your descent. The spirits aren't active right now. You continue downward. The walls down here, they didn't suit. Keep moving. The air pressure down here feels greater. You're getting closer to Karen with each step. Something is approaching. <laughs> a false alarm. Are the spirits below going to spring a trap on you? You continue downwards. So much blood. You shake your head. You hold your breath and continue downward. I somehow knew how to reply. There's so much blood. Why do you have to say this game is purely fictitious and cannot harm you in any way, shape, or form? Why? Why do you have to say that? Don't get up before Saturday. You take the Saturday note with you. We have a mother note and a Saturday note. The sound of the rain is completely stopped on you. Your eyes are strained. The pressure is intense. You feel like you're trapped under a mile of ocean. You continue downwards. Your feet finally hit solid ground in the basement. Something doesn't feel right. You navigate the basement blindly until you reach the room with four directions. You can barely make out the outlines of the door frames in each direction. Which way should you go? We went east last time. You walk back to the basement steps trying to remember why you came this far. How is she still thriving? How is she still thriving? Uh, stream elements isn't working tonight. I'm sorry. Okay, so we're going to kill her again. We didn't just kind of kill her. We friggin killed her. Karen escapes down the hallway, leaving a trail of blood behind her. You follow her to the room to the east. Turn on the light. Reap what you have sown. Raya, Anatoly, Gregor, Karen. I'll never forget you. Everything's fine. Refrain from going in the basement. Cooking companions. Your life just might end. Cooking companions. Don't trust that onion. Cooking time is so much fun. And what? Nothing. 
Nothing bad could happen. Nothing bad. And potato. Potato's got a knife. Extra secret content, y'all. We miss school too much, so we wanted to bring it back. Honest, I'll be playing the role of teacher today. You can call me Miss Cabbage if you'd like. Let's just roll with it, all right? Ha 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 ha. I dropped out of grad school <laughs> so I could work at the butcher. That's extremely depressing. Explains everything so far. They never learn to use their inside voices, Potato. Cabbage looks you right in the eyes. There's no dumb questions or wrong answers today. The Chompat's cabin course is designed to let you passively learn. You guys, is this where we learn to butcher human beings? <laughs> Thank you, Swag. I... I... <laughs> Ghosts aren't real, silly. Cabbage, cabbage. So we ask, we ask Cabbage, like, what about the dead people? And they're like, ghosts aren't real. Onion. Got a cornbread classic for you. What's a ghost's favorite oh. food? A booberry. Let the learning begin. You decide to listen to the Chompets, although you have a feeling something else is at play. Because this is where we learn how to butcher human beings. For the first lesson, let's talk about that nasty oven. One of us was baked into a crust. You threw half of it away without hesitation. Human life is completely disposable to you. I seem to have lost my place in the teaching curriculum. Let's talk about the cauldron instead. The first cauldron discovered <laughs> dates back to the Bronze Age. You can see a cauldron in the famous work of The Garden of Earthly Delights, where a bird man is wearing one like a crown as he eats and poops people down into a hellhole below. That sounds great. Wouldn't want to fall into that hellhole. Most of us were placed in this cauldron, stewing for a day straight. The smell was so foul. Clung to all the linens in the cabin. Absolutely revolting. Cabbage. <laughs> Need to speak with you for a minute in private. The two awkwardly leave the bedroom, slamming the door behind them. You can hear Cabbage chewing out raspberry. Uh, what's another name for Brussels sprouts? Oops. Cabbage Patch Kids. Oh, God. It was more like stalling. Cabbage and Raspberry join the group again. Raspberry, is there something you'd like to say? There is cabbage. You've committed crimes against humanity. You're a scourge on this earth, sent to punish us. Cabbage may forgive you, but I never will. Wow, look at the time. This concludes the Chompette's cabin course. Did you learn anything this time? Or did you just loaf around? Are you remembering it yet? Just join me in the boiling water sometime. Really loosens the meat off those old bones. Right in that nasty oven, there's nothing but a big pile of ashes in the oven. Have you seen that knife? Yikes! Big enough to cleave cabbage in two. Still leftovers in here. Dig in. I think Brett is the murderer, but I don't have the proof. Thank you for that, James. The rules are different for people that die in the cabin. Everyone that does will know the kitchen well. The lucky ones are dead when cooked. 
The others. The others have told us what you did to them. How many generations died brutally at your hands before you gave up? Was it your arthritis that stopped you? Or did you eventually feel remorse? Thanks for playing along today. It was fun to revisit some old topics. Let's sleep on some of this, shall we? We've made your bed. Sweet dreams. Is there more? Is there more? Is there more? This is the third time we've seen the credits. Is there more? This game, you guys, this game has been literally all over. Ah. Oh. So on Halloween, guys, we're going to do my three year stream anniversary party. It's it's a stream a thon. And you should all come. Maybe we can get to 3000 followers and maybe you can make me stream for 12 hours. But stream a thoning with me. <sighs> So it's the sort of cabin in the woods thing where we like people come to the cabin and we kill and eat them. They keep coming to find me and uh, I keep killing them and eating them. Um, yep. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm just waiting to the end here to see if there's like one more because like. There's been a lot. <laughs> Ooh. It's really, really cool. Really, really cool of uh of a uh, Dear Dream Studios to show up and like hang out in the stream for so long. That was really, really cool. It's the first time I think I've ever had the dev show up in my stream. That's awesome. Another Minnesota company that's awesome too. Ugh. Tara Chokehold Douglas. It's a name right there. That's a name. Oh, oh, that game was all over the frickin' place, you guys. <sighs> and me. Dear Dream Studios, I swear to God. We made it to New Game Plus. Different dialogues, events, and decisions to make. They all start with three hearts. Use this opportunity to max out your relationships. We highly recommend recreating the manual save right now. Mariah will not be available to max. Sorry. Hope you enjoyed the experience. Oh, almost forgot. Jump scare mode active. Oh, no. This one has jump scares. Just kidding, Dear Dream Studios. Oh, thank God. Mariah, Karen, Anatoly, and Gregor. I'll keep us alive. Okay, so we're at the point where she leaves. Okay. We finally get the opportunity to use the bathroom. Candle blew out. You grasp blindly along the floor until you find the flash. Oh, God, I don't want to look in the mirror again. You guys, it's going to be the mirror. It's going to be the mirror. Mm. <laughs> Someone forgot to restock the toilet paper. 
beyond disgusting. This is truly the scariest thing you've ever seen. That's the scariest thing we've ever seen. Time to surprise the others with meat. You cooked meat. Where did you get that? What's that smell? Gregor finally gets off the couch. Where did you... The three are looking at you salivating. You take the chair... Okay, so this is the part where we ate the food. They ate the meat for the first time. He goes and throws up. Okay. Okay. This is where Anatoly finally eats the meat and then he goes cries. Yep. Keep them occupied, okay? Karen leaves you with the men. Who do you want to talk to? I haven't talked to... didn't get to talk to Greg last time. Could I say neither of them? Yeah. Yep. We're eating people. We're eating people. Hey! Thanks for cooking the meat earlier. I was nearly passing out from the hunger pangs. Even if I'm a meat and potatoes kind of guy, I appreciate the vegetarian dishes you made earlier. You really respected Mariah's boundaries. Thank you. Gregor is more dense than you give him credit for. If there's extras, slip me some extra meat, okay? Oh, look at him blushing. Do I try to save Gregor this time? I'm going to see how Anatoly is doing. You have the bedroom all to yourself. Where do you want to check first? Under the beds. Under the floorboards? Is that a human bone? Of course it is. Oh, it's a chicken bone. Gross. Inside the nightstand, various child's toys. I didn't get to read it! Oh no. The bloody newspaper said something about me being a murderer. Hours passed. The meal gave everyone the perseverance to keep going. Okay, yep. Karen's a brat. We want to ration the meat. People are like, okay, fine. We'll wait till tomorrow. Okay. We do have a strange dream. Okay, this is the blacksmith who pokes our eyeball out. Okay, he pokes our eye out. Yep, yep, yep. Yup, that guy. Mm hmm You wake up and see Gregor looking out the window. He's not smiling. The floodwaters have receded a bit. Yup. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anatoly's already gone weird. We grab the meat. We feed it to everybody. Okay, we give them the meat. Gregor guzzles it like last time. They know it's Mariah, but they're like trying to deny that it's Mariah. Karen's mad because we the meat's gone bad. Karen's really upset. We send him out. We send him out. Can we stop him this time? That's the thing. Can we stop him this time? Stop. 
Some things are slightly different. Can we stop him this time? Something is approaching. It's Potato. They've moved on. It's only Potato here. The way it always should have been. It's just us and Potato. Why? Why is it just us and Potato? You snap every bone on the way down, landing in the basement as a writhing pile of flesh and bones. The whispers surround you, their laughter ringing in your ears. You wake in a cold sweat. That's new. That was new. Something smells terrible in the living room. Anatoly puked in one of the corners. You leave it there so the others will question him. That's different. Her whispers came through one of the holes in the floor. She kept telling me to come outside. We don't want to rush you, but one of us puked last night, so that's what that smell was. Anatoly is playing dumb for the group. My patience is wearing thin. You have one hour to make a decision. We're going to go speak to Anatoly. He looks pale. Thanks for coming over. He's comforted. He gets another heart. Gregor told me he's heard Mariah. I'm sure Karen isn't being honest. Every so often I can see her peeking out at me through the holes. I really don't want to drown outside, but at least we won't have her tormenting me anymore. I'll tell him the truth this time. How else would we keep him safe? He looks like he's going to throw up. Please get away from me. Okay. Sorry, buddy. <sighs> Anna still looks pale like he's going to pass out. Have you made a decision? No, he's going to leave this time. He's still going to leave. I don't want him to leave. I don't... No! Stay! I don't want you to die. But I know you have to. <sighs> okay. I didn't tell him the truth. I didn't tell him. Missing him already. Oh, were you in love with Anatoly? <gasps> also, whatever happened to the squirrel on his shoulder? Like, do we ever find out what happened to the squirrel on his shoulder? So Potato wants us to kill her. The squirrel wised up and left. Or we ate the squirrel, to be very honest. It's lying on the table in front of you. You take off the glasses first. Okay, so this is us cutting up Anatoly. We killed him. We're eating him. He's breakfast. We found some meat. Everybody's still asleep. This would be a nice surprise after yesterday's events. You cook breakfast for everybody. Yep. And we lose some more of our sanity. Karen devours it. Gregor eats it very sadly. Why does this meat have seeing glasses on them? All right, Gregor eats the food. OK. 
Okay, he's gonna go lie down on the couch, and then Karen's gonna chop him up. Okay. So we basically trap people in the cabin and kill them and feed them to everybody else. And she's telling us, yo, I learned how to chop up people too. And it sounds fun and exciting. Don't. <laughs> mm, I don't want to. Okay, he won't feel pain is what we're saying here. I'm not going to say anything. I don't want to do it. You leave Karen in the kitchen crawling. Okay. So I don't think she killed Gregor this time. At least not yet. Yo, yo. Yo, I kind of... I kind of look like her. Kind of look like her right now. I kind of look like her right now. <laughs> I guess I was doing a Karen cosplay and I didn't even realize it. Get out of bed and follow Karen to the couch. Ma'am! Madam! Madam. Why wait until she's in the basement? Take back the knife and end her life. You explain how difficult it is to get the blood out of wood. Your laziness is unbelievable. The minute those four entered the cabin, you should have killed all of them. You're getting soft. You nursed a weakened butcher back to health. What if she ends up killing you now? I brought you the key. When she goes downstairs, I'll lock the door behind her with that deadbolt. Then let her rot. Karen, potato, might have made great allies in another life. You need to stop her before it's too late. You walk to the basement door. Where is Karen? You can feel her breath coming through the cracks. <laughs> we lock her in the basement. Goodbye, Karen. She slips into the darkness. Are we going to have to fight her again? I'm almost out of booze, you guys. This game, this game. <laughs> It's freezing. Richard Harris rolls in front of you. The basement noise is completely stopped. What do you want to do? Uh, bookshelf. Under the couch. Bookshelf. Cooking, herbalism, and skinning. Books that are good for surviving in the wilderness. Carpentry, metalworking, tailoring. Books that are good for crafting in the wilderness. Wasting time reading books? You were just browsing. Sure, why not read this one? Potato nudges one of the books to you. The edge of the pages looks singed. This was saved from a book burning. I wonder why. One may in truth proceed against such a man as against a person who is gravely suspect, but he is not to be condemned in his absence without a hearing. And yet the suspicion may be very grave, and we cannot refrain from suspect suspecting these people 
and for their frivolous assertions do certainly seem to affect the purity of faith, for there are three kinds of suspicion, a light, a serious, and a grave suspicion. You take the singed book with you. I'd say your entire life has been a grave suspicion. It's a shame you never went to trial for anything. That would never happen. Carrying around the book would be a burden, so you put it back. You notice a child's toy. How did this get under here? It's a small wooden boat. That's weird. No ports anywhere near here. It looks like there's a name engraved on it. Rizale. Maybe Bread would want this? Bread's not around right now. You'll have to hold on to it. Guess we're gonna eat a meal! Karen, you guys, this all goes back to one. Never trust a Karen. That is literally what this game is telling us. Never trust a Karen. Never trust a Karen. Oh, God. There's sweat everywhere. We can wash them in the basement. Just unlock the door and we'll make a day of it. You're not that slow with laundry. Come with me. I have something to show you. What? Who is? Who is behind Karen's butt? Okay. Okay. I'm hungry. Let's get something from the basement. Oh, she's going to lock us in the basement this time. Grab onto the railing. Okay, Potato's saving us, even though Potato doesn't like us. Karen will try everything in her power to kill you. Tread cautiously downstairs. Because I pity what you've become. You work your way down to the bottom of the stairs. And now we're going to half a kill Karen again. <laughs> Can you hear me? I've been down here the entire time. It's so good to see you again. There's plenty of bread down here. Why aren't you saying anything? Okay, so this is the this is the spirits trying to convince us to go with them. Tr they're trying to trick us. Okay, she's trying to trick us again. Beware of Karen. At least she's going out with a smile, like me. I literally, you guys, I literally picked the best costume for this. Okay, Mariah leaves. Next, we talk to Gregor. Oh no. Oh, you can kind of creep. Can you kind of creep? You can kind of creepy see him. Did you hear that knocking? It's another trap. Yep, we tell Gregor that we already talked to Mariah. He can't fool us. Um, turn on the light. Okay. Beware of Karen. Okay. Okay, here's Anatoly. You can kind of see him. He's all creepy and bloody. Thought you'd defend him. Okay, okay, okay. He was like, hey, I'm going to lure you to do a thing. And I'm like, no, you're not. Karen's been practicing her butcher again. Okay, yep, we got that part last time. It ends at the bottom. Karen might be alive, but you won't be. See you again soon. We got there before. And now we fight Karen. Look behind me. 
Potato, Karen's grown stronger than you as of late. Consuming her friends has imbued her with a rage. She's lost in the abyss, and nothing but death can end this madness. I hope you've prepared for what comes next. I have with the save slot. You can feel something cramping up in front of you. Oh. Cabbage is back! Never fear, Onion is here. I'll rise to the occasion. Sometimes Mary Raspberry. What lie did you tell them, Potato? That you had moved on. Will you let us go? He shake his... Oh, we're not going to let them go. Someday, maybe. Compets. We can't let Karen take it over. She's worse than me. Oh, we, can't, we don't want to let her take it over because she's worse than we are. You're right, you're never fully dressed without a smile, misbehave. Did you see what she did to Gregor? Unhinged. She's a cut above you right now. You don't need our help with this. Just remember what she's done. Channel that anger. She's like potato now, right? I'm still here, cabbage. And as punishment for earlier, we're locking you in the room again, potato. No chomp at trial needed. One of us should hide the key. What did Potato do? No need to twist the knife. Ha ha ha. Good luck. Chompet's getting positioned behind you, ready for what's next. You feel around the wall blindly to locate the light switch. Karen. Oh, God. She's going to be so creepy looking. Oh, no. She's normal now. We got to kill her. Oh, we win. We just automatically win because fuck her. That's why. We only, only one stab this time. We didn't stab her 20 times like last time. Oh, this has to be like the real end, right? <laughs> Thanks, Muffin. There's a new chompette. Cabbage. <laughs> There's a new chompette. Hello there. General Kenobi. Welcome to the Chompettes, Turnip. Did she kill us? They said he's trying to speak. Did she kill me? Did she kill me? What is this? Yeah, we don't know what happened to the squirrel. There's Gregor. Ah, she looks cute, you guys. Is this just like the fan art that you can collect throughout it? Yep, basically. Basically.
Well, you guys. Oh. Very tentative good game, I guess. Little like a GG, but like GG, like G G G maybe I don't know. <laughs> well, Dear Dream Studios, you guys made a really awesome game. I'm sure there's stuff I missed. I'm sure there's more to find. At one point, I looked like I was doing a Karen cosplay, even though I was a Cheshire cat. Um, that was exactly what I like in a game. It was weird. It kept me guessing. Um, it was horror. I love horror games. It had like cutesy elements that like threw you for a loop. Um, that is exactly what I was looking for in a fun horror Halloween game to play. So thank you. Thank you, Dear Dream Studios, for sending me that code and allowing me to play that. I'm happy to happy to spread the word about this game. That was incredible. That was incredible, you guys. I got to see who who's on for us to go raid tonight. I have heard rumors that Meg was doing a super drunk crafting stream tonight. Do you guys want to go? Do you guys want to go see a super drunk crafting stream tonight? I think we should, because I think we need to lighten the mood. I think we need to lighten the mood. Uh, you guys, thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for being a little mad with me. Um, these horror game costume nights are some of my favorites, sincerely. If you guys have not followed me already, please consider dropping me a follow. We're getting so close to 3,000. And I'm really, really trying to make this a space that you guys want to come back to and hang out in. I'm trying to make it fun and engaging by playing these new games and doing fun things with you. Um, I want this to be a space that you guys enjoy just as much as I do. Uh, so thanks for being here and thanks for being a part of this. I really, really appreciate it. Be sure to join our Discord if you want to find out more stuff about like when we're going to go live and the games we play. You're welcome, Muffin. It was a wonderful stream. It was great to play these two games and do a Friday Night Frights double feature. Please grab that raid call. As always, you guys, I want you to stay safe, stay healthy, be excellent to each other. Please make good choices. And we're going to see you guys on Monday. Have a great weekend. Let's go spread some love to Meg. Bye, everyone.